Good morning and welcome to our service this morning at St Andrew's with Holy Cross. Here we are again. Grace, mercy and peace from our God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Amen. It's so, so good to be with you this morning. And whether you're watching online or back on um, a recording later, uh, welcome. And I can't wait to be with you again in person. But for now, this is good. Uh, Let's pray together our prayer of unity as we join in. I hope you have your copy ready. Almighty and everlasting God, as we come together as your church, the body of Christ, we thank you that we can worship you together, even if we are not in the same place. We thank you for this opportunity to pray together and remember each other at this time. Thank you that you have brought us safely to this day and we ask that you keep us from danger. Guide us in all that we do and may what we do be righteous in your sight. Bless us now, we pray, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together now, the prayer of preparation. Faithful one, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer, and shape our lives. For the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Before we begin um, praising God, we're going to spend some time now just confessing, just reflecting over the things that have gone wrong in our lives. So we just take a moment to reflect. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners We turn from the wrong that we have thought and said and done and are mindful of that we failed to do. For the sake of Jesus who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now we pray our collect for today. Almighty Father, whose Son was revealed in majesty before he suffered death upon the cross, give us grace to perceive his glory, that we may be strengthened to suffer with him and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay. 
Our first reading today is taken from 2 Kings 2, 1 to 12. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven in a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. But Elisha said, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of the prophets at Bethel came out to Elisha and asked, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, Elisha replied, so be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, Elisha, the Lord has sent me to Jericho. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So they went to Jericho. The company of the prophets at Jericho went up to Elisha and asked him, Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master from you today? Yes, I know, he replied. So be quiet. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he replied, As surely as the Lord lives and as you live, I will not leave you. So the two of them walked on. Fifty men from the company of the prophets went and stood at a distance, facing the place where Elijah and Elisha had stopped at the Jordan. Elijah took his cloak, rolled it up, and struck the water with it. The water divided to the right and to the left, and the two of them crossed over on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I can do for you before I am taken from you. Let me inherit a double portion of your spirit, Elisha replied. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. Yet, if you see me when I'm taken from you, it will be yours. Otherwise, it will not. As they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw this and cried out, My father, my father! the chariots and horsemen of Israel. And Elisha saw him no more. Then he took hold of his garment and tore it in two. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. This is Mark 9, 2 to 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before them Elijah and Moses who were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good for us to be here let us put three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared and covered them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they, were, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I've left my sermon over there, so I'm just going to get it. Holy Spirit, please guide our hearts as we reflect on your word. May I speak truth and love as you speak to us today. Amen. Can you actually imagine how Peter, James and John must have felt? Speechless, I would imagine and yet bursting to talk about and find out about the whole thing at the same time. There are layers upon layers of significance in this account. 
but I don't want us to get bogged down in those details today. I'm not a lecturer, nor am I being a homeschool teacher right now. I am a disciple of Christ, and I'm yearning to know more about Jesus, and I have the privilege of speaking to you wherever you are. I'm really conscious that wherever in a physical sense also means wherever in a spiritual sense. I don't know if you've never prayed a prayer before or if you even feel like these disciples on a daily basis, but I do believe that scripture can speak to all of us today. The message of the transfiguration is the revelation of who Jesus is. A voice from a cloud declared, this is my son whom I love. Listen to him. This is not the only time Jesus' identity is revealed, but I feel it's an extremely crucial element here. This is not a message we can underestimate. We talk about this time and time again for a reason. If you've ever done the Alpha course, you might recall that the first week is entitled, Who is Jesus? At Jesus' baptism, a voice from heaven made a similar declaration, This is my son with whom I am well pleased. It's crucial not only to our faith, but our understanding of God and the world. <clears throat> this is also one of the reasons that Jesus asked the disciples not to tell anyone about what they've seen until he is risen from the dead. Now, we have the gift of reading this in hindsight. We know what Jesus means by that. And we can think quite sympathetically about the disciples as they discuss among themselves what that means. We could almost think, oh, bless, as they wonder and probably don't get it right. However, there is a danger that with all of our knowledge, we could miss the point. And that's exactly why Jesus asks the disciples to wait. Jesus often asks for secrecy around his miracles. But this is the first time he gives a condition. Keep the secret until. And it's really perplexed me. Of all the strange things about this encounter, the fact that Jesus asks the disciples to keep it quiet is one that really confuses me. What does all this secrecy mean? Especially now, today, when we actively encourage each other to share the good news. Paul's letters encourage us to evangelize, and we want to share our faith and our testimonies. It seems natural to me, and honestly, if I saw someone up a mountain shining like Jesus did, I'd want to tell everyone. Well, Jesus knew this, which is why he asked them to keep quiet for the time being. Jesus deliberately didn't want lots of attention on this event. It occurred up a mountain, far away from the public eye. He took just three disciples with him. He doesn't want people to flock around him because of a wonder he performed. He most certainly did not call the paparazzi. This is no publicity stunt. Jesus doesn't want everyone to know just yet because his authority is not based on miracles. He doesn't do this to impress people. Jesus doesn't heal for the wow factor. Jesus is not an entertainer. He knows that this encounter is nothing like the disciples have ever seen before and he knows that they will be speechless. So I think the transfiguration is not about impressing us. And I also wonder if it's not about distracting us. <clears throat> we could so easily get fixated on the teachings of Jesus. We all know what it's like to become obsessed with the law. If coronavirus has taught us anything, it's how quickly the rules can change. How differently people can interpret the laws and how much damage can be done to relationships as we try to live within them. I would imagine that we all know someone who's done something during this time differently to how we would have responded. It's really hard. It's really hard to let that go. Perhaps sometimes we shouldn't, but that's a sermon for another day. I'm not suggesting that we break the law, but when the law becomes our primary focus, rather than our relationships, we end up losing sight of what the law was about in the first place. <clears throat> the point is, part of human nature is to be fixated with laws and teachings. Jesus can be described by non-Christians <clears throat> as an excellent moral teacher, 
And this is usually meant in a complimentary way. Look, I've heard people say, I don't like your religion. I'm not religious myself. But Jesus seems like a nice guy. He was a revolutionary moral teacher. I'm sure you've heard people say it as well. You might have even said it yourself. <clears throat> My daughter has been studying Christianity in her RE homeschool lessons. And I've been listening to the videos that she's given to watch. I heard the online teacher say, the main message of Jesus was to treat other people how you want to be treated. And this instantly felt really uncomfortable to me. I couldn't put my finger on why. I kept thinking, well, the teacher isn't wrong exactly, but somehow I feel like she is. It's about so much more than that. But I was sympathetic to the fact she was trying to give a brief summary for some year fives. And actually, she wasn't evangelizing as a preacher. But I couldn't shift it. Her words kept coming back to me. The main message of Jesus. The main message of Jesus. I think the transfiguration actually holds a key to this. And the key for me is in that word, until. We can never fully understand what Jesus has done for us. But his teachings and the miracles do not even come close to what they really mean when they stand alone. When you have bits of the gospel in piecemeal, you can miss the big story. And this is what Jesus was doing when he asked his disciples to wait until the Son of Man has risen. <clears throat> you see, when they'd known him, eaten with him, done life next to him, and spent time really getting to know him, like you know the people closest to you. When they'd seen him suffer and be persecuted, and they knew in their bones that he was the last person on earth who deserved that. When they'd watched him die and grieved and feared and they really started to grasp what they'd lost. Then, then when they saw him rise, when they saw him defy the grave, victorious not only against the Roman Empire but against death itself. Then they looked back on these moments and then they knew. They knew it was him all along. At the time, they didn't understand. They could not have understood. There is no right way to understand who Jesus is until you've seen him suffer, die, and rise again. Because Jesus is so much more than a good teacher or a clever wise man. He is so much more than charity. In the Transfiguration, we see Jesus connected with the Father. Unlike when Moses went up the mountain and he came back reflecting the Father's glory, Jesus comes back full of the Father's glory. Rowan Williams describes this as Jesus reassuming rather than transfiguring, because here he is more who he has always been, and that's God. So how could the ground hold the one who made the ground? When you utterly know this in your bones, that the one who flung stars into space, the one who is utterly other than us, because he is divine and we are not, yet he is like us because he chose to be, and he chooses to give us wise counsel, and he goes beyond charity to include the people the rest of this world has left behind. Then you know Jesus and who Jesus is. He is God. And Jesus loves you. Jesus has defeated death. This is what you need to know. This is the gospel. Jesus says you can be free from your past. But if that's going to mean anything to you, you need to know that he has the authority to say that. You can read entire books on the relevance of Moses and Elijah and why they were there. One aspect of this account is that it's prophetic, which means speaking about how things will be in the future. Moses and Elijah both handed over their ministries, and Jesus is preparing for his eventual return to heaven. So there's going to be a handing over of his ministry too. But this is still more than the teaching of Jesus. This is about who Jesus is. It's a prophetic sign as Jesus shines whiter than white, 
that's what's to come. It won't really make sense until after the resurrection. But as Jesus is resurrected and shining white, so too, one day, will we. So what does this mean for us on Valentine's Day in a pandemic preparing for Lent? Well, it means the same thing that it means any other day in any other place. It means that there's more hope than fear. It means that love wins. And love is on your side and cheering for you. The one who flung stars into space knows your name and knows all about it and loves you still and wants you still. Today we see by faith, not by sight. How blessed are those who have not seen and have yet believed. Jesus is inviting you closer today. Amen. Thank you, Anna, for those very thought-provoking words. And together now we declare our faith in God in the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God, the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come before God now with our prayers for the world and for each other's. And I thank David Marshall for these prayers that he has written. Let us pray together. Almighty God, at the transfiguration, you showed your son Jesus in a new state of glory and gave his disciples a glimpse of what they would see in his risen life. As we worship together week by week, help us to get a glimpse of your heavenly kingdom, as well as a deeper understanding of how your Son, Jesus, can transfigure our broken and unfulfilled lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your Son Jesus was wonderfully transfigured in front of his disciples high upon the holy mountain, and at that time he asked them to keep it a secret. Help us not to keep, secret the, to keep the secret, but to proclaim to all that Jesus Christ is Lord. Give us strength to live the gospel and to carry our cross in order that other people come to know Jesus in the same personal way as we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as we approach the period of Lent, we ask you to encourage all Christians to draw close to you for their strength and comfort. We particularly remember those Christians who suffer persecution as a result of their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for our parish of St. Andrew with Holy Cross. We ask you to pour out your Holy Spirit on the congregations of our two churches so that we can show your love for each other and the local community. We pray for all who bring comfort, care and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship and for all that enriches our daily lives. 
In a moment of silence, please ask God to show each one of us the part that he wants us to play in our church life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, as we pray for your world, we ask that you take from us all hatred and prejudice. Give us your spirit of love for all people, whatever their race or creed, and give the same spirit of acceptance to all world leaders that, through mutual understanding and common endeavor, peace and prosperity may be increased throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, you gave us a beautiful world to live in and to care for. We know that in many areas our stewardship has not met your expectations, but through the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, we know that you can transfigure and restore all things in creation. We pray earnestly for a change of heart and attitude, and awaken into a better way of living and the courage to reject wrong principles and decisions throughout the world. In a moment of silence, please pray for any country that is particularly on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we thank you for all those who help our local community to run smoothly because of their jobs, voluntary work, or neighborliness. Help us to be supportive and encouraging and to step into situations where we can serve. Bless our neighbors and strengthen those who are working in your name in order to bring healing and comfort to those in need. In a moment of silence, Please pray for any aspect of our local community that is on your mind today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for all who are afflicted with illness, grief or despair. Bring healing to every broken life, relief to all who are in pain, hope to the dying, and strength to all who care for them. In a moment of silence, please pray for one person that you know who is in particular need of God's help today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to draw close to all of those mentioned so that they may be aware of your healing presence and we ask you to provide your peace and comfort for them at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as we move into the coming week, help us to take with us all that we have heard during our time together. May those words be grafted into our hearts and produce in us the fruits of your Spirit to the praise and honor of your holy name. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're now going to share the peace in a very safe way because you guys are in your own home and we are far enough away from each other. God will speak peace to his people, to those who turn to him in their hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the peace together.
exalted, the King is exalted on high. Oh, praise Him, He is exalted, forever exalted, and I will praise His name. He is the Lord, forever His truth shall The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and God of might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen, Amen. Lord, Lord, we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us all, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen, Amen. Lord, Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. 
We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high and we long for his coming in glory. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Amen. Come, oh, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Look with favour on your people and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Amen. Come, oh, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with St. Andrew and all your saints at the table of your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And we say together that prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. At this time, when I am the only one who can take communion, I take it on your behalf, and Anna will lead you in the prayer of spiritual reception. The body of Christ broken for us all. O loving God, in union with Christian people throughout the world and across the centuries, gathered to make Eucharist, hearing your holy word and receiving the precious body and blood of your dear Son, I offer you praise and thanksgiving. Even though I am exiled from tasting the bread of heaven and drinking the cup of life. I pray that you will unite me with all the baptized and with your son who gave his life for us. Come, Lord Jesus, dwell in me and send your Holy Spirit that I may be filled with your presence. Amen. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. I'm 
so glad you're in my life I'm so glad you came to save us And together we say the prayer after communion. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love. And as you have fed us with the one bread of heaven, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we um, approach Lent, um, I'm sure you haven't forgotten that Tuesday is Pancake Day. If you have, I'm reminding you now, don't forget those lemons and flour and milk mm. and everything mm. else that you need and the cinnamon. <laughs> um, there, are, um, there is a Lent course. This is going to be online on Zoom. And the, there is a special service on Ash Wednesday in the evening at 7.30. This will also be live from Jane's study, I think. Um, you will receive, if you haven't already, a card with a prayer that you can say on Ash Wednesday um, because we're not able to do any Ash in service at the moment. All the other details of what's happening online will be um, in the news sheet on the website and also um, some of you get it on hard copy. Mark wants to remind me of something. Yeah, yes, come and do it. Uh, do it then. Just a, a quick um, message from Jackie, actually, that next week we'll be using... Um, next week we'll be using a slightly different order of service because it's Lent. And Jackie will produce some printed copies of those for anybody who wants them. So please just let her know through the number on the news sheet and they can be produced uh, for you and delivered. Thank you, Mark. For a church that's not meeting in person, we still keep in driving ahead with all these notices. <laughs> <laughs> and so we come to the end of our service and the time for the blessing. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with your, you and those you love and pray for now and always. Amen. 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 Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In, In the, the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
thanks everybody. see you next week.